I would not be offended. No, not be offended. Don't, as long don't, as I'm able to don't. capably do it, I would, I'm sure most of us would do it. I think that's part of it is, is like, there's so many different things going on for so many different people that it's hard to sit down and go, well, this needs doing. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, and it's also because like, not everyone knows what everyone can do all the time. It's hard to know. Well, if I go tell you to do that, you might go, I yeah. can't do it. And if you planned for someone else to do it, then it's starting exactly. to like, <laughs> so it's just, it's a real um, kind of a chicken before the egg scenario. You need to work out which one to do first. Do you find the person for a task first to work it out? Or is it just easier for you to do it? Or anyway, we're going to need someone to take notes. There might not be very many. I can take, take notes. I mean, I don't know if... Basically, notice is for any, if um, if anyone's got any tasks that need doing, or it's, that it's just making notes of like that sort of stuff, or if there's any, basically we just make a note of actionable actionable items, and um, if someone volunteers to do that actionable item, and then it gets gets put on Trello. But a lot of teams are kind of doing it internally right now, so it's kind of helping Dan might turn up because um, he's around the looks of it. He might have thrown people off because I'm hosting it on my link rather than um, Arthur's because I think Arthur is uh, in a call. So mine's not um, normally based on the... Yeah, what's the agenda? What's the agenda? I don't really have one. I was just going to hear, I was just going to listen to what everyone needs. If there's anything for tasks, um, I don't really have one right now because I got asked 10 minutes ago to run it and I'm like... um. I don't, I don't know what to say. And um, we're trying to organize there's, things. It's a constant battle. There's a little agenda on the Slack, on uh, general. Yeah, well, we've got as you know, we've got as team agendas, but we don't have anything before okay. that. So, Myra, if you want to okay. start, because you're here, or Christine, I don't mind which. Have you got anything to anything that you need to talk about, Myra, with your your task, with this team? Oh. Um. We are doing fine, um, onboarding new people, uh, trying to push the process. Um, we probably have uh, at the moment a very strong interception with this uh, search engine uh, team, which a little bit confusing uh, at that point, so I'm trying to figure it out. You, is it uh, the differentiation between what you're doing and what risk, what risks doing, and what search engines are doing? Because search engines are kind of involved are, in a number of things. We are, we are doing the same thing. We are doing the same thing, and we share the same resources. But that's logical because we are pretty much doing the same thing. Just my thing is a little bit more focused. So the only thing I have to do within the next few days is really like uh, find out um, on what's the. Uh, optimal integration because even though i was planning to do that from the very beginning the process is still not flawless but besides that we are kind of fine no blockers no blockers no blockers are you okay with people regarding people right now because i know you all want a bigger team so are you okay with like resources on people or anything else uh, we do have, we are in, uh, in an active process of onboarding, so it's all kind of, you know, it's cool. Cool. Yeah, well, it's one of them things you don't want to have too much of an in- inflow because then you're just going to spend all your day orientating everyone and never getting anything done. Okay. Um, Christine, with tra- task trans- ties or task transmission. Hi. Um, yeah, Hi. so <laughs> how are you? I'm okay. Uh, and you? Great. Uh, Good. So where we are, so yeah, so we are uh, uh, trying to work on enrich, enriching our data set with um, like different onto- ontologies mm-hmm. and, um, and some external social media data set that we're looking into. Is that the Twitter one you're on about, like scraping yeah. Twitter for cool? Yeah, I don't know what, you know, we can do with it yet but you don't, just, you, don't you don't know what you can do with the data until you've got the data so you have to go looking for it sometimes to find out are you anyways yeah. yeah so but that looks interesting they have they track a lot of like social distancing um you know a lot of um government policies 
Uh, so it would be interesting to see if there's any trends or something like that. Um, and on the other hand, we are, um, uh, we have like two task groups that are uh, working. Uh, one is to extract time periods and the other is to extract uh, simple characteristic and simple size. And I think there is still just uh, at a very initial stage and we will touch base today to see where each group's at. And um, for time periods, we are also looking to annotate some data. And so I'm happy to see that uh, Slava has already had a tool called Hypothesis on the server, and I think that's what we're going to explore next. Yeah, uh, yeah so and then the other thing that I think might be worth discussing is that, uh, so <laughs> we, we've been, uh, I found that it's a, a, a bit difficult for people to use Trello. <laughs> It's also uh, discussions happening on the other uh, channel, but it's just uh, I, like uh, how to get people to uh, kind of regularly update their progress. That would be sort of yeah. It seems it seems to be a lot. It seems like a lot of people do what I do, where they just store it in the head, and nobody knows what anyone else does. And it's a uh, it's something we do need to try and institutionalize a little bit of like we need to basically have a better feedback system so everyone else can have, at least have an idea what other people are doing without having to dig through or just talk to them because yeah but at the same time i understand documenting is a time consuming task mm -hmm. so it's a there's a balancing act between how much documentation we do and how much um and how much getting on with things we do because obviously if we spend all of us time documenting we're never going to get anywhere so it's the, the we'll lose the nimbleness if we uh try and document everything Right. So, um, yeah, there is a healthy balance between documenting everything and documenting only the things that are absolutely required to document. And obviously, it's an insanely hard task to accomplish, but I believe we're, we're going to get there. The main motivation, I believe, from the perspective why we need to document styles, and there are multiple ways to help people understand why. But the most important one is in the fact of how we are structured and being volunteers. And you know, at any moment of time, you may not have enough time to actually work on the task and you need to pass that task to someone else. And that's an easy uh, you know, uh, explanation. Yeah, I mean, I, I, quick story, but I used to work for a company that searched for people, long, long lost family and friends, and their process was very much like, every time you do anything on a case, document what you've done, who you've contacted, because exactly, you might get hit by a bus tomorrow, and if you've been working on a case, looking for someone for six months, and you've documented none of it, and it's all in your emails, and you remember it all, and then you get it by a bus, it's like all that work is goes with your head. And that's kind of how we need to think of it as volunteers. We don't want to have to get to a point where you feel like you have to be here and no one will ever be able to do the thing that you're doing, even though you're doing a very valuable job. But we also need to get to the point where we can decentralize that away and make, make sort of that human redundancy. And, and we can do that by knowledge propagation, saying, oh, these are the things that I've worked on. This is the problems I've solved so far. And these are the problems I'm still working on. Even if we just sort of, I don't know how we can do it. We do, we do need to work on how to, we can all make that a bit better. Um, we'll move on to VT team with Dan. Hey guys. Um, hey. So just, just to go through the different projects we're working on quickly. So Jeremy Zucker is working on extracting mechanism uh, from the literature to enable his causal modeling uh, different approaches. So protein, cellular function, tissue, uh, different mechanisms at that level. Uh, Isaac Gottfried is working on extracting adverse drug reactions for different drugs that are mentioned. Um, Ali Haider Bangash is working on Twitter and getting Twitter data so that we can extract sentiment about different drug and vaccine related papers. So syncing up with Christine, I think is gonna be super helpful because it sounds like Christine, you've already done work there. Uh, Stefano Renzi is working on drug dosage extraction um, in, in the literature. And Siddhartha Mitra is working on uh, kind of making a vaccine related uh, deliverable. So we're kind of still brainstorming there a little bit, but 
maybe it's going to be yeah. in the form of automatically extracting genomic and proteomic annotations from the literature. So we're still yeah, because somebody's already been putting up their their discussions about the the, the genome and, and and like I've read through some of that and I'm like I'm not completely sure what all of that means, but I'm sure if there's <laughs> a way of automating the information extraction from already existing literature, that would be a really good resource to have. Yeah, totally. So we're, we're thinking about like how feasible and useful that would be. So we're talking to some people as well. Um, those are the main updates about the projects and just generally what people are working on to get a sense of that. As far as blockers, um, I think just we could use more help with software engineering. I reached out to all the people that you mentioned and I've got like one tentative response. So software just, engineering. Okay. I'll, um, can you, Michael, can you note that for type? Task PT needs software engineers. I'll look on that. And if you can put it into our very snazzy little, in fact, I'll do it for you. Thank you uh, so much. Our, sn our snazzy little uh, new system that Art has built. Uh, that well, yeah, Art has wh built. What's the protocol for doing that again? I forgot the instructions. So basically, quick, oh, I'll quickly show people very quickly because this is, it, will, it will be a digression otherwise. Uh, help needed. So I do help needed, you go shortcut, short flow, request manager, and then you write what you need. Ah, uh, cool. Then the skills that are gonna be needed for it, the time commitment requirements you think, and who needs to be tagged to it. If you're doing it, tag yourself. If you're tagging for someone else, or if, if for like you, Dan, if for example, someone in your sub teams need this, this person, and they're the best person to talk to, tag them in it, because it'll say you posted it, but they'll get the information on it. Cool. Easy peasy. Very it's very snazzy. simple. Yeah. It's very snazzy. And when people click on it, which I won't do, they'll get a message of who to get in contact with. And the person who's been tagged with it will get a message saying this person has volunteered for it. It's, it's hopefully like a job. And if, as long as we can keep this job board thing live, new people can be directed going, go have a look at the job board. Is there anything you can help with rather than having to like manually direct people? That's kind of the hope. Very cool. Um, anyway, enough of that. Thanks. Uh, I think last, uh, we've got Lucas with our search engine, discovery engine. I don't know what name What's to call it yet. <laughs> What's ever? Engine. The thing. Uh, yeah, the thing. actually, the thing. Uh, actually, still uh, organizing people. I mean, there is a progress in it. Uh, yeah. And over the weekend, I would like to coordinate everything in terms that uh, starting to assign certain things Mm -hmm. to uh, certain pe uh, certain persons. Yesterday we had very productive uh, talk with uh, mm, with Anton and Ilson on how we proceed uh, further with Scrum and probably with a Velvet methodology. And yeah, it's uh, things slowly but slowly going. Yeah, the forward. tech the tech backbone is going to take time because you're going to have to make sure you pull all the people who have got the technical experience yeah. together. I mean, like, you've got, you've got I have, to get each other on board with the process of what you're I, gonna I have already, I mean, like, uh, I have a, a, maybe not a lot, but enough uh, positive feedback that they are still, they are on Slack, but some were lost. Uh, they are still interested. They have skills that we need for our job. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, like updating them on things that we are uh, doing and to give a, a kind of generalized overview because many of them feel lost in that book yeah i mean if, if it if it comes down to it and you're not sure that someone you know you've got three or four things that you're definitely going to need and you can sort of make a concrete example of it again the thing i just showed you put it up there and, it, and if you and if people you know you end the day if, if you think someone's going to volunteer for it you say well i have made a job post if you definitely want it tag yourself in it it, it makes like a paper trail of people volunteering and we can understand when people choose to sign up for it and i think that's um it's a really good way of sort of managing it so we can see that actually they, rather than going assuming someone's going to do it because they said they're going to do it there's a little bit of a yeah they definitely if they understand what's going to be needed of them and they're going to be able to they're going to volunteer yeah we, we uh, at least we are going to combine people in groups like two maximally three persons mm -hmm. uh with diverse let's say background or experience so that uh, we are sure that there's no one person overloaded with yeah, uh, too and big it's also or something like that. and it's also a teaching opportunity in a way cross training can happen and to can cross yeah. on each other. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, um, I don't well, I'm, I can't see Brandon in, um, and I don't know if anybody. Uh, Brandon, in. Brandon is as far as I know because I talked with him two days ago, something like that. Uh, Very busy, uh, isn't it? Needs 
needs uh, some days off because he he's just here yeah, actually because uh, like the quarantine reco uh, like um, restrictions in the Czech Republic um, have been taken down and now he can live like once again a normal life uh, and yeah and he needs just a couple of days no. off I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, I, I, absolutely. I I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, no, I, I, think, I, I think understand him. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I really need to make a point of reaching out to Brandon, but I don't. I know he's so busy. I don't want to overload him with having the conversation with him. But I also need him to tell me what he needs, even if it's just a case of I need I need two other people who have the same skill set uh, as me to divide the work across them. And uh, if he just comes actually, to me with I need more people who can do the same thing as me, and and just like you said, with a little cell of three or four people who can overlap on each other rather than one person that's, carrying that's actually because, the whole thing. Yeah, that's because something that I'm noticing that some people are overloaded and they won't admit they're overloaded, but they are. And we need to sort of work out uh, how to stop that. This and it might mean he has to teach be, someone, but that's fine. Yeah, the, the whole story with V9, V10, etc., those data frames with all, all our data. Uh, actually, my plan is to uh, recruit two persons for it, to go to Brandon to make a quick call, a kind of introduction to them so that they can take over uh, his, exactly. let's say, that's duties, what, that's something what, like that's, that. That's what we need, but I can't decide that for it. And I'm also not technical enough to be able to make informed decisions of a, the exact level of technicality required. So I need someone to come and we were like, well, we, we need someone who's going to be able to understand A, B, C, this platform, this system, these things. I can guess, but I don't want to guess because the last thing I want to do is find some in time, finding someone who fits my guess based on my assumptions and it doesn't fit because it's not actually what's needed because I'm still not the person on the ground doing the, the grinding through the problem, you know? Um, that, that's 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 uh, why I would like to go to, to to talk with Brandon over the weekend and to cl clarify this thing. And I think that on Monday we'll be still like we'll have uh, Brandon's work back in the play, uh, but without uh, uh, giving Brandon this burden of of the whole uh, mission of maintaining data. Yeah, I mean, it, hopefully, I know the data sets are going to be incrementally, you know, added to as well, but I don't know if the pace of change is going to be just the same or if it's starting to... No, no out. one knows because we don't many know, things, do depend, the things depend on the specific requirements and it may turn out that, okay, that we need to rearrange a lot. And yeah, that's that's why we are going to work in we need small. More, we need more people in that team, but it's really hard to know who else is, in, who else is running that team because all I know is Brandon's running it. And I don't know who else is. I know there's like lots of crossover. There's like some people taking part a little bit and they're in two to three. And I, and I, I don't know. It's not a concrete enough team. I can't, like with Dan, I can go, who's in your team? There's like these eight people are doing these eight things. And I've not had a one-on-one -on -one with Brandon to, to be, for him to be able to go, I've got these four people and I need another three because I just can't do it. I know he's sort of said he's busy, but he's not coming to me with like, I need this thing replacing or I need someone else. And I can't, I can't until he gets, gives me something concrete, I can't work with it. I just can't guess for him. And I know he's so busy, so I don't want to overload him. I'm just being too too polite, probably. Um, yeah. What else have we got? Anything That's else? That's all right. We, we got Lucas. Uh, Lucas for that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't think so. NLP so. teams. Uh, uh, Manuel's not here. Have we got any from anybody from Geo wants to kick in with anything? I, I think the uh, the la latest update was that Manuel also needs some time to recover. Uh, I don't have details, but he uh, prompted Daniel to come back. But I think Daniel is overloaded with his main work, so there's probably a gap in that task, and we may need to do the same flow as we are doing for Brendan just assembling a team of people with experience of on like geo stuff and extracting uh, the current progress from team members. And yeah, because geo and, <coughs> well, well, geo's work <coughs> and Brandon's work is very similar because both of them are for yeah. a sort of data extraction, data curating and data organizing and geo's from public data sets in one place. And obviously the data sets team's pulling from the code 19 data sets. So they can, we just need more people doing that basically is the assumption I'm getting. And I have no idea how to ask for people who could do that. Yeah, I think and, it's such uh, a unique skill that doesn't, people don't write that on the CV. It's not really a thing they go, I just curate data sets from the public sphere. It's not people. Well, people Slava do is- Slava does, but there's not yeah. many people like him. <laughs> they're, exactly. they're not everywhere. 
So here's the thing that I would propose for you, Tyler, to do is actually create a Google document like on, on this process of like what to do when someone needs to drop off, like how to assemble this Stripe team that um, offloads work and actually assembles a new process because it, we are seeing these patterns and we will see more of those. Exactly. As, as countries come back up and back up, I mean, yep. as jobs come back online, people are going to be less available and there's going to be, other, I mean, the idea is we try, we've got a distributed system with a distributed network of people and the idea is the distribution of strength. But right now we've got a lot of centralization that we need to try and decentralize yep. I mean, okay. you know, to make people less relied on because it's not fun to be like, well, if I don't turn up to work today, everything grinds to an halt. That's not a fun feeling. That's just pressure. And we're not here for pressure. We're here to try and solve yeah. problems. <coughs> the pressure exactly. is the big problem. We don't need to give each other more problems. Um, right. Has anybody got any questions? Uh, we've got Liam, I think, wanted, you wanted to yeah. have Liam a little bit talk about what web problems we've had and you can cover that. So Liam. Yeah, quick intro. Liam is actually our security person. And he has been working in the background to solve a couple of issues. And just to give him a quick summary, uh, to give him a, a moment to provide a quick summary of that. Cool. Uh, sure. Yeah. I just I just joined up to be a little fly on the wall and uh, see what y'all are doing in the standups. Um, so I uh, um, I've got a security and DevOps background, um, and so I've been looking at uh, what y'all are trying to do in Google Cloud. Um, as well as uh, uh, other little bits and pieces like chasing down. Um, I think there was uh, some, some issues with the website a little while ago, so it got labeled uh, as bad by some security scanners. So I was uh, chasing after that this week, and getting it relabeled with Cisco and, and that kind of thing. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm here as a resource to help if you're finding stuff that you're, you're in a little over your head, especially when it comes to um, uh, hosting stuff or automation or security things, because uh, I've had to deal with most of the obscure technologies at some point in my career. Yeah, I think, I, I think Anton, um, Anton P's dealing with a lot of the devops -y kind of related things right now. He's assembling yeah. something resembling that, as far as I understand. I don't know who's in it yet or what, what they're dealing with. But I've always known that the, yeah, the DevOps and the background stuff is going to at some point be an issue when we need to work out what technology we're using and how to use it and how to do it securely rather than just cobbling it together. <laughs> and I'm, like, yeah. I'm just turning up as a fly on the wall. I started out like that and now I'm hosting it. <laughs> I just, yeah, just wanted to watch other no, people work. Um, yeah. I mean, like the stuff that they're sh trying to do in Google Cloud, uh, I'm going to look at, at uh, setting up an automation pipeline for all the stuff that people are doing so that we can, um, you know, not have people logging into individual servers and that kind of stuff. Yes, and just have please. A, a clean, easily manageable, uh, and easily documented interface for access. Oh, that's... sorry. Clicked accidentally there. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll have a clean documented interface for accessing all of that uh, and everybody should be um, uh, that, you know, hopefully we can, you know, add security in like code analysis and that kind of stuff too down the road uh, so that Sounds we, good. yeah. Sounds great. I would propose actually, Anton, if you would, it will be looking uh, into this daily call to connect with Liam and introduce him to how the current infrastructure is set up and also potentially connect uh, Liam with Slava and uh, Maxim. Because yeah, cause Slava and Maxim are doing some, I don't even know what they're doing right now. <laughs> no, I can't even describe it. I know they're doing something that's very clever and like dashboards exactly. and, and processes and databases. And I'm like, I'm not really sure what technology you're using anymore, but it looks really cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually already so in communication with all of, all of the people that you've just mentioned. So I think- uh, Perfect. a good job of directing me and uh, I've created a, a a cloud infrastructure channel for a bunch of the chats and stuff around that too so we're uh, we're working in those ways already Great. Max did you have anything to say before we uh, wrap up anybody else got anything else to say I, I have a kind of question like why we were we blocked and how <laughs> How come that we are now unblocked? What happened in there? Um, okay, well, the reason that we were blocked 
is because our site got labeled as uh, a phishing site um, by a couple of different security scanners, uh, OpenDNS and uh, I remember the name of the other one, don't offhand. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, probably one blocked us because the other did. Um, so it was probably just originally one and then it propagated. Uh, the, uh, my, th there's a couple of possibilities we're working with. Uh, one was that there was some mass emails sent out with huge CC lists without a proper uh, uh, unsigned procedure early on. Uh, Pro practice. Probably. That sounds like a thing that's probably happened at some point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that could be an issue. Uh, the other thing is that a brand new registered domain with uh, Corona in the name might have been blocked just because of that. It, yeah, it right? sounds like it's a, it sounds like it's a phishing or a spam or a taking advantage of fake news type scenarios or whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the third possibility that I had is that there was uh, at one point a Google Doc linked um, uh, from the main page where people could add in their information, uh, including yeah, Google that was a, a, that existed that existed at one point as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember when I when I first uh, started looking at the project that that was the case. And it's possible that uh, some bot went in there and added some phishing URLs, and those could have gotten picked up by a security scanner. So any of those things could have been the reason it's on there. Uh, All getting, them things we've stopped doing now, though. So thankfully, it will be repeated. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, I kind of flagged those things about a month ago when, when uh, Daniel first uh, asked me to uh, uh, take a look at the, the project. So, uh, and then I got authorization from my, my work to spend some work hours on this. So it was kind of a- uh, Always uh, appreciated. Volunteer. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time and your effort then. Yeah, no worries. Yep, amazing. Um, if anybody else has got anything to say, and we'll, if not, we, we're kind of on the half an hour note, just about, so we can wrap it up there unless anybody else has got anything they need to bring up. Now is the time. Thank you very much for your time then, everybody. Um, I'll see you guys in Slack if you need me. Shout me if you need anything resources-wise and you can't be bothered doing something. Just send me a message or tag me somewhere. I'll normally catch you within a short period of time because I don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. See you later, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Right, bye. 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 Bye.